you can agree with me that it doesn't matter what culture you come from, food brings everybody together. And you think about all the family celebrations and all the holidays, what is the center of it besides the family fights? It's the food. And uh, that was no different in my household. My mother was a pretty bad cook and she was worse when she was cooking Western food. And she noticed that my brothers and I were starting to speak English all the time to each other because we were learning it in school. And we, she didn't want us to lose our, our culture, that part of our culture, at least the language part of our culture. And she knew how much we liked our Chinese food. And uh, so she used it as uh, ammunition to get us to learn Chinese. So when, she's, when we're eating Chinese food, we have to speak Chinese at the table. If we started to speak English, the threat was that she'll start cooking Western food. And it's like, <gasps> so we kept our Chinese up. And uh, till this day, I'm very grateful that I can actually have uh, conversational Chinese and be able to function uh, relatively well. Now, the other interesting thing is that the Japanese actually invented the fortune cookie. It was not the Chinese and it was not the Chinese working on the railways. Um, the Japanese had brought it over from uh, Japan when they came to immigrate it to North America and they were making fortune cookies as a, a sweet snack in their bakeries and then eventually um, they would open up a restaurant. Now they didn't open up a Japanese restaurant to serve sushi because uh, European Americans wouldn't eat raw fish especially not in those days when refrigeration might have been an issue. What they did was they opened up Chinese restaurants and they started, be, and because uh, European Americans love having something sweet after their dinner, um, they would serve up these uh, little crackers that were in the shape of the fortune cookie. Um, I have no idea when the fortunes were slipped in there, as a, uh, uh, but somebody must have invented it. And I think the first product, large production of fortune cookies started in San Francisco. Now, what happened? How did it end up in Chinese restaurants? Well, as I mentioned, the Japanese had uh, started it in a Chinese restaurant, although it was a Chinese restaurant run by the Japanese. And uh, interestingly enough, ironically enough, a lot of the Japanese sushi restaurants are now run by the Chinese. So, um, the, the thing is, I think when the, this is what I believe happened. The Japanese um, were put into in, internment camps during the Second World War when uh, Japan invaded Pearl Harbor. And the Americans and the Canadians were very uh, frightened that the Japanese Canadians would turn on them. And so sadly, they were taken out of their own, their homes and put into these camps for the duration of the war. And during this time, I think what had happened was the Chinese took the opportunity to take over the fortune cookie and started serving it um, as a dessert or a way to end a meal in their own Chinese restaurants. Um, that's what I believe. I mean, there are lots of myths out there. You can go look it up and see what you can find. The other thing is, Chop suey. Chop suey is actually not something that was a dish in traditional Chinese cuisine. At least a lot of the new immigrants in North America at that time, if they were coming from China, they were coming from southern China in from the province of Guangzhou. And um, what had happened was a lot of these laborers that came came from peasant stock. They were farmers. And if there was a drought and, and they couldn't you know, make money to feed the family and um, they would all migrate to, to North America. And it was almost a tradition, as you had heard from the interview uh, with Ye Ye, that he was four generations emigrating to North America. Um, and so it was with mine as well. And um, chop suey in Chinese is zap sui, which means odds and ends, little bits and pieces of this and that. And it was really a poor man's uh, way of putting a meal together. Um, what we call like, what we call cupboard cooking today. Uh, whatever you have, you just chop it up and put it all together. 
If you have meat, great. If not, you go with vegetables. But it became a really popular dish in New York, again, because of the poor um, immigrants who lived in New York City. And if you've ever been to the tenement uh, apartments in New York City, you'll notice that people were crammed together in very tight quarters and uh, sometimes cooking can be very tough. And if it's a hot, humid summer day, they probably want, wouldn't want to cook in their small um, closed in apartments. So oftentimes they would go out to eat and where would they go? They would eat in a Chinese restaurant because it was the cheapest way to eat. And chop suey became huge. It's like tacos to, to uh, uh, for New Mexican cuisine and or pizza to um, people in North America, which is the pizza in North America is very different from the pizza you eat in, in Italy. So it's interesting how um, the demand of the day would bring food that we identify with a culture that's not necessarily traditional, but it has become a North American tradition. Mm -hmm.